Hello everyone. Just the other day I posted a video on YouTube showing Powerbox Core and Atom users basically how to activate uh, delayed flap action with synchronized elevators. And in that video I received a question from a glider pilot. And what they wanted to do was basically uh, use some of the features of that video. However, they were unsure how to go about selecting various flight modes using their throttle stick. So one of the popular uh, functions that glider pilots tend to use is basically activate different features of the aircraft with their throttle stick. So it's not just used for throttle. Um, they wanted basically three distinct flight modes selected by the one throttle stick action. So they wanted a flight mode selected while they were sort of towards bottom stick, a second flight mode around centre stick, and a third flight mode with the stick up near the top when the top say a third of its movement. So how do we go about doing that? Now this particular person had worked out reasonably quickly that they could select two flight modes so one at say top half the stick travel and one at the bottom half the stick travel but they couldn't work out how to manipulate or activate a third flight mode around centre stick. It's actually quite easy to do uh, but it may not be um, intuitive for some folks out there. Anyway, let's have a look at how we do it. So what I might show you is the original issue that this particular pilot had. So if we go into flight modes, uh, this is the current working model I was using the other day. Uh, let's pick a free or blank flight mode. So I'll select a switch here. So the switching action, we're going to use the throttle stick. So stick A, click on OK. And you'll notice there's a prompt here now to select the actual switching point. So if I move the stick, you can carefully see the little white cursor moving from left to right. So far right is um, top, of the, top of the travel of the stick. And then as I bring the stick down low, the cursor moves down towards the left hand side. And we can move these switching points around the place. So we have a red, a... Um, yellow and a green zone. So the yellow is a hysteresis zone and for those that don't know how to use that I'll explain that in another video. For this video we don't have to uh, worry about the hysteresis so we can minimize that at this point in time for this particular example. So as it's set there as I move my stick we can get a trigger point around about sort of 27, 28% somewhere around there and it goes into the green. So with this setup, it's quite easy to see how you can set a flight mode to trigger when we move the cursor into the green. We can activate a flight mode. That's fine. And we can reverse these. So for instance, if I swap these values around, if I drag this one over, we can have a green point, say, just down low, say the bottom third of the travel, roughly. And we can say, OK, this particular flight mode will only activate with the throttle stick down at the bottom end. And then we can set up another flight mode with a uh, different switching point. So we can move the switching point, say, over here to the top. If I drag the uh, green over here and swap it. So then we can make, say, the other flight mode only activate when the stick is near the top of its travel. And obviously we can vary the uh, amount of travel on that. However, this only gives us two unique uh, points where we can uh, activate these flight modes. We can't easily activate one in the center because there's no option to have just a, a simple green zone in the center with red either side of it. You can't do it. Uh, it's impossible on the screen. So you can either have green on the left or on the right but not center surrounded by two red off zones. Maybe that's a, a good option for a, a future a feature within the core. However, there is a way around this, um, and it's actually quite simple, and we're going to use virtual switches to achieve this. So what we need to do is basically have an area in the center, which is um, go or green, and then basically have an off position either side of that. How do we do it? Okay, let's delete this switch, because we're not going to use this particular stick switch to activate the flight mode. We're going to use a virtual switch. So I'll delete it from the actual... Um, flight mode and let's go into our virtual switch menu options okay at the moment there's no virtual switches so let's create one 
And let's just rename it, say, VSW for virtual switch for this particular example. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the throttle stick for inputs, for the two inputs, and then we're going to and the two inputs together. And hopefully this will become clear how it all works as I progress through this example. Okay, so let's set up the throttle stick or the as our first input. So if I move the stick, stick A, and you see we've got the familiar basically two position switch. Um, we can't center, uh, set a center position for it or an exclusive center position, but we don't need to. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this out to about say plus say plus 33 percent so this will give us about a third stick travel now these will be adjustable and you can set the actual width or the range where over which the throttle stick can move for your flight mode selection you can set that uh, how you see fit so let's start and I'll drag this one over a bit so let's make the top one say um, 33 to make it roughly a third um, of the positive travel I should say and this one will bring it up close as possible now you don't want to set both to 33 you need to set this to 32 because if they're both 33 it does swap the uh, values around and that plays a bit of havoc so just leave 1% difference between the two you just won't notice that when you're switching so from bottom stick to half, roughly half stick and then just a bit over half stick, 33% over half stick, we have green. In other words, say on. And then it will switch to off. So that's all very well. But we don't have a center selection still. But don't worry, we'll sort that out in a second. So at the moment, if I move the stick all the way down, you'll see that the output state, or the input state I should say, is on. If I go to half stick and a little bit above half stick, it's still on. I go a little bit further and it switches off, which is basically what we just programmed. So far, so good. Hopefully that makes sense. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the same switch, or the same stick switch, I should say. So again, same throttle stick. We've only got the one throttle stick. And now we're going to do um, the reverse. So basically, remember we had on the other screen, we had green going up to about 33% toward into the positive flow or positive range this time we're going to work from the top down so we're going to move these guys over a bit let's drag them over and I'll fine tune these in a second so let's make that one 32 and we'll make that one 33 to mimic the positive uh, stick switch which is the other input so this sort of works in reverse so at the top we've got on go to half stick it's still on and then we've got off in the red zone so this sounds a bit counterintuitive but it'll all make sense in a second so if we look at the two switches just ignore the output at this point in time if I've got the stick at the bottom you'll notice the bottom one's off top one's on if I move the stick to the top they invert so it's basically the opposite however if I bring the stick towards the center they're both on. So what this does is setting the switches like that, the two inputs like that, allows us to detect the center position. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an output state that when both of these are on, we'll have a non-output. So all we need to do is change this to an AND function. And now what happens is you watch. I've got the stick up the top. I start reducing the stick. It's currently off, 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 off. I get to some point above half stick and then if I keep reducing it a bit now both of them are on so imagine this is activating your flight mode now for the center stick position so I keep reducing it keep reducing it keep reducing it and at some point if I keep going below half stick it'll switch to off keep going a little bit more a little bit more there we go it switched off and then if I keep going low low or down below that point it will stay off so what we've basically done now is set up a switch that activates only with the stick in the center position or around about the center position 
Now if you want to change how far you can move the stick around center, all you need to do is basically drag these points. Uh, for one of the switches you'll need to expand this green zone towards the right. And then for the other switch you do the opposite, you expand it towards the left. So hopefully that's sort of making sense. Now, all we need to do now is go back into our flight modes and if I say select this blank one here we're going to select our virtual switch so not our throttle stick but our virtual our newly made virtual switch which we called VSW virtual switch for short and just I'll just move the throttle stick to about halfway and wiggle it a little bit and notice it stays on if I go a bit past the halfway point you notice it switches off so if I go full stick it's off bottom stick it's off around about center it's um, on. And if I go back to our tree, our flight mode tree, you'll notice it goes to our standard flight mode, bring the stick towards center, goes to our other flight mode, which I haven't renamed of course. And then if I keep going below half stick, it'll switch over again. Simple as that. So you can actually set up multiple points along the throttle uh, travel to do this. Um, I mean, obviously you're limited by the amount of mechanical throw you have. You can't put in a hundred switch points, but you could easily do four without too much dramas if you wanted four. If if you want more than four, it'll probably get you know pretty hard to select it with your fingers because uh, there won't be much movement in the stick before it actually change flight uh, changes flight modes. Now, one other advantage in using the virtual switch, if we go back into our virtual switch selection. Now say you want to turn this function or this virtual switch on and off uh, with another switch. Uh, with telemetry there's you know a myriad of options to do this. You could be here all day explaining them all. But let's pick a simple switch function. What we can do is basically take the output of the virtual switch and let's call this one here um, something else. Let's call this one um, on off or something just for this example and we use the output of this top virtual switch so let's put in here um, VSW okay and all we need to do is compare it with a switch so say let's pick this switch here um, oops Let's select it, switch J, and in this case I'll just drag, say, so it's activated at the bottom or when the switch is pulled towards me. I'll just reduce that hysteresis. So now basically, um, oh, we've got to and the two functions together, or the two inputs I should say, not functions. So if the switch is off, now you can imagine driving the uh, flight mode with this virtual switch and not the top one anymore. We're going to drive it with the bottom one. So with the switch in the off position, um, again if I move the throttle you notice the output here does not change. So basically it doesn't do anything. So that flight mode will not be engaged. However, if I now flick the switch to on, switch J, now if I move my throttle stick, bang, we've got an output. So go back into our flight modes, we uh, change this particular switch from VSW to the new one that we made called on off for this example click on OK so at the moment the switch is on I can move my throttle stick as I get towards the center it activates the um, flight mode if I then say reduce the throttle I'm in a different flight mode for instance if I then say change my switch position if I now move my throttle stick it doesn't change the flight mode and you can see I'm sort of half around about half travel there's just no change in the flight mode if I uh, bring the switch back on move the stick again there we go simple as that so hopefully that's helped that that pilot that left a message for me um, and this is probably a handy feature for other other pilots as well just to be aware of what the virtual switches can do they're quite powerful and just with a bit of head scratching, you can come up with some very convoluted and complex switching arrangements. Okay, thanks very much for watching. See you next time.